is Jason Spitzer, and if you're watching this video, you are asking questions or needing information about the scheduled open carry <coughs> um, walks that I have scheduled on Facebook, <laughs> whether it be the one that's happening on the 7th of next month, or July, the one that's happening on July 4th. A lot of people have been asking me questions, and I can't answer them really in great detail over Facebook. And the best way to answer them is to talk to somebody over the phone, but also to give them some information that they can continue to come back to via watching a video that I can post. I'm going to try to make this video as clear-cut as possible and as least um, uh, confusing as possible. So I want to cover several things in this video. I want to cover op the open carry of the handgun, the, uh, the open carry of a long gun, the open, the, the open carry of high capacity magazines, how you should open carry it as a suggestion, <clears throat> how to behave, and how to, the, the flyers that we're going to be passing out, and um, last but not least, also want to cover um, just the general information of what I'm all about and what I'm not all about. <laughs> First off, this is not the updated version of the flyer, but this is this is all that I have because I ran out of ink. And I'm going to try to zoom in and go down as much as I can. And I am trying to get a copy of the updated version that I will scan on there. But in general, <clears throat> the flyer will say at the top, a new part, will say right there, uh, highlighted in red to remember the men and women who have died for our freedoms since 1775. Remember that long red line that was shed in blood for our freedoms. You may have your opinion about the current wars and everything that we're in, but let's be honest with each other. We would not be here right now if it weren't for men and women that were in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, uh, the World War One, World War Two. If Hitler took over. We wouldn't be here right now. And if we were, we would all be speaking German or Japanese or something else. And we wouldn't have the freedoms we have right now. So if you don't agree with the people and the current wars, just at least remember the ones from the earlier wars. It has information about the First Amendment, Second Amendment, the state constitution, which is Article 1, Section 13. Um, there is no laws uh, about open carry. The Second Amendment and the State Constitution, Article 1, Section 13, covers open carry. The only thing that regards open carry is <clears throat> a magazine capacity and the transporting of a long gun in a vehicle. And it cannot be loaded if that long gun is in a vehicle. Um, there is some of my personal information that I have gathered throughout the years of working at a gun shop. I worked at a gun shop for years. For anonymity purposes, I will not name the name of the gun shop. But I worked there for years. And just by seeing the demographic, by seeing people who choose to open carry versus conceal carry, that's some of my own personal information. I have a backside, but again, I don't have that updated copy. I will post another video with the updated copy on here. But on the backside, it basically moves a section from the front to the back. And it also says people who I run into who choose to open carry and people who have to open carry based on disabilities like people who are wheelchair bound if they open carry um, with a shoulder holster or a chest holster or something they can't be argued that it's a concealed weapon because police officers in other states have argued that the gun being on a person who is wheelchair bound is considered a concealed weapon because the wheelchair is a vehicle so Instead of going and getting a concealed carry permit, which might be difficult for them, they choose to open carry. <laughs> People with uh, hip problems or mobile problems where it's easier to open carry. People that have skin conditions. I ran into a man one time when I was working at the gun shop. His skin condition made it feel like his, his skin was on fire if he didn't wear something that was a uh, high thread count cotton or smooth silk. And most people that open uh, concealed carry wear a hip holster tucked in the waistband somewhere right here. He couldn't do that. It would make it feel like his skin is on fire. So he had to open carry. Um, I also list on the back some disqualifying f factors for concealed carry, 
but not for open carry. Um, people who have had circumstances when they were a youth and got two misdemeanors, they can't get a concealed carry permit, but they can, can open carry. I also do have a disclaimer on the top of this. The disclaimer reads, Disclaimer, the author of this flyer would like you to know that, th that this has been researched to the best of his ability. Facts may be off, may be missing or off. This is mainly education and free thinking. That is just to protect me on my end. I don't want somebody to think that they can open carry um, uh, an AK-47 with a 100-round magazine fully loaded. That's a machine, a legally modified machine gun. And <clears throat> when they get arrested, I don't want them to say, well, he told me I could. That's not the case. Then at the very bottom of the new updated flyer, it has some some web some websites and it also has some information about uh, the difference between a AR-15 and a machine gun um, via a website a YouTube channel and YouTube video that explains it very well and then it has my Facebook and my YouTube account now if anybody would like that is going with me would like to maybe meet up earlier before any of these events and would like to edit this flyer and roll over some ideas, I'm all for that. We can try to meet up at a Starbucks, at a Barnes & Noble, at somewhere, and we'll, I'll be happy to do that. That covers that portion right there. Um, let me move on. This video may be a little long, so just bear with me on this. Let me move on to the open carry portion. <clears throat> this is how I have been open carrying my firearm. As you can see, I have my holster on my hip for my pistol, whether it be my XD or my Glock, or a revolver. I have my Mosin a gun. I will probably continue to have the bolt pulled back, and I will not have any ammo for this gun on me. I highly, highly and strongly suggest that people who are coming with me carry the gun, the muzzle pointing down, no ammunition, and no magazines, like this. I know some people may have an AR-15, and their holster, their, their sling rig might be set up something like this in the front. I'm not going to tell you that you can't do that, but I highly suggest against it. And I know one other person who I've talked to, he has a, a specific sling setup, and I can't do it with this sling, but he's going to basically be carrying his AR-15, almost like if it was a sword, if you will, on his side like this. So you can, as you can see, you could easily go up like that. I've already talked to this individual. I'm not going to force him to buy another sling. But if you're walking around and you're passing out flyers and you have your hand like this, hands like this, this could freak out somebody. Having the gun on your chest like this can freak out somebody. Having your gun pointed up can freak out somebody. Having your gun readily available to the shoulder like this not only could freak out somebody, but let's flip it upside down, for example. It can easily, easily ride up like this. And you're constantly, after walking around a bit like this, going to shooting, going to a local shooting range, you have to adjust it all the time. And we want to limit the touching of any part of the gun, even if it's the sling. What I normally do when my gun becomes uncomfortable is I don't even do this most of the time. I do this. And that usually fixes whatever problem it is. I'm probably going to have to make a part two of this video. So Stay tuned and just be patient for part two. I'm going to record it right now.